Hey, it's Gordon, aka Eeyore Equus, with another video from TriStar Observatory. So the other day, I got a question. Somebody said, hey, can you make an OBS tour video? Well, yeah, I like talking about the OBS. But let's face it, there are way too many cool things going on here to cover in just one video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a series of videos. Each one is going to focus on a different part or a different component of the observatory. And when we tie them all together, you'll have your tour. So today's topic is the imaging rig. This is the centerpiece of the observatory, and frankly, it's why we're all here. The heart and soul of any imaging rig is its mount. This is the Mach 1 GTO German Equatorial Mount from Astrophysics in McChesney Park, Illinois. The Mach 1 will carry about 65 pounds of telescope and gear, and is suitable for refractors up to about 6 inches, or newts and SCTs up to about 8 or 10 inches. The Mach 1 sports a periodic error of plus or minus 3.5 arc seconds before applying any error correction and is an outstanding performer. Astrophysics has a reputation for exceptional service and in my experience that reputation is well deserved. On top of the Mach 1 are my two imaging scopes. At the bottom is the primary DSO imaging scope, an SV80 ST triplet APO refractor from Stellar View in Auburn, California. This is an 80 millimeter aperture scope with a 480 millimeter focal length for an f6 focal ratio. And this particular one boasts a streal ratio of over 0.99, making it one of the finest performing 80 millimeters that you'll ever set eyes on. Stellar View also has an exceptional reputation for customer service, and again, in my experience, well deserved. Behind the Stellar View is a feather touch focuser from Starlight Instruments in Columbia City, Indiana. It is motorized to allow automated focusing routines from clients such as Sequence Generator Pro and is hands down the most reliable piece of equipment on the rig. It has never needed adjustment, repair, or service in its lifetime. It simply works right out of the box and continues to do so every time I ask it to do its job. In fact, I am such a fan of Starlight Instruments Feather Touch Focusers, I recently had Lunt install a one and a quarter inch Feather Touch Focuser on my solar telescope as well. On top of the rig is an LS50 THA from Lunt Solar Systems in Tucson, Arizona. This is a 50 millimeter tilt tune hydrogen alpha solar telescope with a B600 blocking filter. Has a 350 millimeter focal length for an F7 focal ratio. When I'm imaging with this scope, I'll usually use the same QHY 5L2 that typically sees service as a guide camera on the DSO rig. Moving around to the back of the rig, we have the Starlight Express Mini Filter Wheel. This is a USB-powered and motorized filter wheel. Its carousel will hold five one and a quarter inch filters, and perhaps its most unique feature is the built-in off-axis guider. If your rig has concerns with back focus, but you need an off-axis guider, this is the device for you. The off-axis guider just slips right down into the side of the filter wheel, taking up no more space in your imaging train. The only downside here is that, as I said, it only holds five filters. Extra carousels, however, are only $60 and very easy to swap out. At the very back of the rig, we have the main imaging camera. This is the 414EX Mono CCD from ADIC, featuring Sony's ICX 825 sensor. The 825 is well known for low noise and high sensitivity and features an array of approximately 1300 by 1000 6.45 micrometer pixels. The cooling on this unit provides about 25 to 30 degrees Celsius of delta when fully engaged. Because of its small sensor and large pixel size, the 414 is not ideal for telescopes with a longer focal length, but on shorter scopes like my stellar view, it provides exceptional field of view for most targets. The results in this combination are somewhat undersampled, but it's nothing that some dithering and drizzle integration in PixInsight won't take care of nicely. And finally, we come to the control box for the rig. It's just a plywood box built in my shop. When I poured the concrete pier here, I ran some conduit through the pier so I could run all the cabling and everything under the OBS. All of that comes through the back of the box, then up through the top. We've got power distributed by Anderson power poles here at the top of the box. All the wires run up from the box into the mount. It's uh, through the mount cabling system that Astrophysics offers on all of their mounts. And down here, individually, on the left, we've got the focuser boss control for the feather touch focuser, the CP4 control box for the astrophysics mount, 
and then all the USB is handled by USB over Ethernet, which comes into this powered USB port here on the side. So that's the primary imaging rig for TriStar Observatory. Links to all the different components and hardware and devices that you saw in this video will appear down in the description. I appreciate you taking the time to watch and hope you'll come back next time when the second video in our OBS Tour series will cover the electronics and computer components of the OBS. Take care.